Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Cyberpunk, I Got a Man of Steel. Chapter 31. Enough. How long are you going to argue? Xu Shiming's majestic voice interrupted the doubts of all the people in charge present. Everyone present remembers that in 2050, under the leadership of Xu Shiming, the company quickly modernized and got rid of debts, and was renamed Kangtao. This was the year Kanto launched their new generation A22B Super, smart, pistol on the market. Thanks to the government's public support, the company invested heavily in high-tech research facilities and rapidly expanded the smart weapon market. In just 20 years, the former competitors Nakota and Tektronica, a high-tech military enterprise, have been far behind. This old man who led Kong Dao to the top of the world, even if the power in his hands was basically dispersed, no person in charge would dare to challenge him. It's the same as Arama Saburo who handed Araba Lishuin and Arama Hanako the Araba Company. Some people are always the soul of a company or organization. After the meeting room fell silent, everyone looked at Xu Shiming. Their panic is also because of Yifei, after all they all know the risks and disadvantages of installing prosthetic bodies. You must know that although the prosthetic body is extremely powerful, even the most basic First Order Seinvestine can make a street kid like David into a respectable mercenary in Night City at an extremely fast speed. Although it is undeniable that David's talent and certain uniqueness, but even so because of the use of too many prosthetic bodies, he will inevitably be on the verge of cyber psychosis. And Yifei, even if he has a super strong prosthetic body that Kong Dao doesn't know about, but even so, the prosthetic body on Yifei is still extremely important equipment for Kong Dao. Once this new type of equipment can be obtained first, with Kong Dao's strength and Wa Guo's support, they will soon be able to use this technology to become the real overlord of the world. If Yifei can get this kind of data with his human body alone, then this person is equivalent to Tang Monk who went to the West to learn Buddhist scriptures. With a little bit of his DNA data, he can unlock the mysteries of the human body. Even possible, longevity. Thinking of this, how could these responsible people not be crazy? We have no other choice in this matter. The only choice is to find this person, and it is best to bring him back to China. Xu Shiming, sitting on the main seat, announced the final solution to this matter with a deep voice. As long as he can be won over, Wagwo will rise. Xu Shiming said here that his mind is full of the time when he just joined the army and when he was in danger and was ordered to lead the company to reform and establish Kangtao. Speaking of this, all the people in charge in the conference room had their eyes burning, and every one of the people in charge sitting here had this dream in their arms. Ling Xiaohan, Chairman Xu, just say it straight. Ling Xiaohan immediately responded when Xu Shiming called her name. In theory, Ling Xiaohan's level is similar to Xu Shiming's, but Ling Xiaohan still respects this old man. After all, there would be no Kong Dao without him. I found this Yi Fei. I learned from the information that he is also of Chinese descent. Although he didn't grow up here, I think you can start from this aspect. Remember not to irritate the target and make him feel disgusted towards Kong Dao. That's the end of the meeting. Xu Shiming said that he paused for a moment, and then cut off the contact with the people in charge of other continents. If possible, try first to see if you can get DNA from Yi Fei. Chairman Xu, I understand what you mean, but it's hard to find this candidate. Ling Xiaohan already understood what Xu Shiming meant when he heard this, but who should he choose? I have a granddaughter studying with you. Xu Shiming's voice reached Ling Xiaohan's ears unhurriedly. But, Chairman, I don't think Xin Yue will let go of this matter. After all, she has already hurt five or six boys in school who wanted to strike up a conversation with her. Ling Xiaohan naturally knew that Xu Shiming's granddaughter was studying in America, and he arranged this matter, but it was because he knew Xu Xinyue that he thought that Xu Xinyue would not agree to approach Yi Fei because of these things. Hearing what Ling Xiaohan said, Xu Shiming immediately blew his beard and stared, that little girl calls every day to find someone who is stronger than her and smarter than her. How many men in the world have such conditions? Thinking of her granddaughter Xu Shiming gave her a headache, and strictly speaking, Xu Xinyue had nothing to do with Kong Dao other than being Xu Shiming's granddaughter. Although the plan is to let Xu Xinyue join Kong Dao from the bottom up next year, but if this matter gets out, the impact will be great. After all, Although the news of Yifei is only circulated among the top executives of major companies, it is still too sensitive among Kangtao-related households. 
Shu Keming's letting his granddaughter approach Yi Fei seems to have a strong personal meaning in it. If Shu Keming's opponents caught him, he might be the founder of Kang Tao. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't think of another candidate. Shu Keming also said with a very headache. Ah, who's talking about me? In a well-known college in America, a beautiful girl sneezed and frowned. A week has passed. Yi Fei and the others have become well-known during this time. Ever since they first singled out the Maelstrom Gang's lair, Yi Fei has been well-known by the major middlemen in Night City. Although they didn't directly destroy the Whirlpool Gang, Yi Fei took over the Whirlpool Gang's lair and caused the Whirlpool Gang to be in chaos for a few days. If it wasn't for a person from Brick, the Maelstrom Gang would probably be in chaos for a few more days. After finishing the ticket for the Whirlpool Gang, Yi Fei already had contact information with middlemen in various regions. As for how they got Yi Fei's contact information, of course they went to ask the priest for it. Although there are business frictions between middlemen, the mercenaries they know will share. After all, sometimes it is very painful to entrust but no one can take it. This week, Yi Fei and the others were not idle, but were active in various areas of Night City, taking on some relatively large orders. For example, Regina Jones, I don't know where she found that Yi Fei has the ability to kill cyber psychopaths so she can contact Yi Fei. Yi Fei captured two cyber psychopaths alive for Regina Jones in this week alone. Well, it was directly knocked out and sent to her. Yi Fei didn't hide these things, after all, the more abilities you demonstrated in Night City, the more commissions the intermediary would ask you to do. But today Yi Fei did not accept the commission, he has more important things to do. Yi Fei spends a little time every day perfecting the game in hand, and today Yi Fei finally perfected the game. Although he has super brain power, his main direction of attack is not here, so it took a week to finish. Yi Fei, what kind of game do you think we're going to play if we don't accept the good mercenary commission? Our reputation these days has almost resounded throughout Night City. Jack said on the phone with some confusion, in his opinion, the scenery he has gained in the past few days is far better than the scenery he has gained in the past 10 years. And Yi Fei actually went to an unknown game company when countless middlemen were rushing to find them as commissions. Jack, why don't you just take a day off? I'm just going to discuss some business. Wouldn't you like to make an appointment with Misty today? Yi Fei was a little speechless, he felt that Jack had already lost his head because of the hype, but he was not angry, after all, it was Jack's dream to become a legend of Night City. There are indeed quite a few intermediaries looking for them these days, but Yi Fei doesn't want to accept those sesame-sized commissions except for the fat jobs introduced by those famous intermediaries. Not to mention money and a waste of time. Okay, okay, you're right, I haven't met Misty a few times in the past few days. Jack thought for a while and felt that what Yi Fei said was also reasonable. These days, sometimes they have to accept two orders in a day, which is indeed a little tiring. Okay, hang up, I've already arrived at the game company. After Yi Fei finished speaking, he hung up the phone. Looking at the dilapidated apartment in front of him, he opened the information panel and glanced at the address sent by Judy, and compared it, it was indeed correct. This is the company, Yi Fei, you are not being tricked, are you? V, who came with Yi Fei, couldn't help but twitch the corners of his mouth. It seemed a little different from the things with the word, company, in her impression. Lucy said today that she would stay at home, so only V and Yi Fei came out together. You don't think that a company is as big as a board, do you V? Yi Fei is a little speechless. It seems that the only companies that can be called companies in Night City are super large companies such as Arbin, Military Technology, and Kangtao. It seems that there is also Yi's company, which is the largest contractor in Night City. Public procurers, who build and renovate roads, bridges, tunnels, subways, light rail, power stations, network relay stations, water facilities, and sewer systems are almost all their responsibility. The company is also known for its philanthropic activities, such as grants for underprivileged children and scholarships for gifted young people. At the same time, Yeshi Group has also invested heavily in research related to ecology and new energy. Then why not, for those who don't even have an office, I'll call them studios at most. V glanced at the dilapidated apartment again and said. Stop talking so much, don't we know if we go up and have a look now? As Yi Fei said, he dragged V upstairs. 
The messy corridors are full of rubbish, and there is a mattress in some spacious places, which should belong to a homeless person. Let me see, room 403. Yi Fei glanced at the door number that had been covered by dirt, and knocked on the door after confirming it. Knock knock knock, who, don't you know we're busy? A slightly angry voice came from inside, and then Yi Fei saw a man with an afro open the door. Who are you two? We don't have anything here. The man looked at Yi Fei and V with some vigilance. Although he didn't know what the purpose of these two cleanly dressed people was, even a child in Night City couldn't be trusted. It's you, the brat at the boxing gym. Me, I'm the savior of your studio. Yi Fei smiled and then said something that made Nancy Phillips puzzled. You, go downstairs and turn right and walk 800 meters to a hospital, where can you go to generate electricity? Philip directly extended a middle finger to express his disdain. Hearing Philip's words, V who was standing beside Yi Fei couldn't help laughing. Ha ha ha, Yi Fei seems like you want to give investment to others, but he thinks you are crazy. Yi Fei's face was full of black lines when he heard V's words, and he didn't expect that the guy in front of him wouldn't even let him finish his sentence. What, investment, boss, come in and sit down. Hearing V's words, it took less than half a second for Nancy Philippe to change from an impatient expression to a dog-licking expression. Why didn't he doubt it, because he saw Yi Fei's clothes with the Oasis logo on the collar. No one who can go to that store to buy clothes is a poor owner. Just now he was angry because he was interrupted from writing the program. After he came out, Yi Fei also said that he was their savior, which made Philip directly get angry and scold Yi Fei. Now hearing V say the word investment, Philip, who was short of funds, returned to his sanity in an instant. Your face changes quite quickly. Seeing Philip transformed from a grumpy old man into a little licking dog, Yi Fei felt better, but he still slapped his lips. After all, he came here this time to discuss business, since it was to discuss business, he couldn't give so many good looks, otherwise how would he strive for the greatest benefit? Isn't this just a rush? After speaking, Philip took Yi Fei and V to the only clean place in the apartment, beside a coffee table. Boss, I just heard this beautiful lady say that you want to invest. Philip asked cautiously, he was really desperate now, quit from a powerful game company, brought his own savings and wrote a super dream game with a few like-minded friends. But the difficulty of developing the game and the consumption of funds far exceeded their imagination, and they had already spent 30,000 euros in just three months. It is worthy to be a semi-finished product. Although this semi-finished product can be sold well, as game designers with ideals, they don't want to do this. They had a big quarrel within the team because of this, and now everyone else has gone out, leaving Philip still in a hurry to make the game. Well, I accidentally played your super dream game, and I think it's very promising. As Yi Fei spoke, he took out the Cheomong game replica chip he got from Judy. Philip was stunned for a moment and then his face darkened. You must know that although he had advertised for investment on some websites, they had only given out the semi-finished game chip to one person. Sir, since you got this game, you must have played it. Although Philip was angry that Judy gave their semi-finished game to others, there was nothing he could do. Their studio's biggest bargaining chip is gone now. If the other party wants to make money, they must sell it directly to a big game company outside. There is no need to come to them to discuss investment or something. Stop, before you say anything, I suggest you use the chip in my hand to have a look. Yi Fei interrupted Philip. He came here this time to incorporate this team studio. Although he has the idea of starting a game company, it doesn't mean that he has time to create things that are not available in the cyberpunk world, excellent game. Philip frowned when he heard Yi Fei's words, but he put on Cheomong and started playing the game Yi Fei made according to Yi Fei's words. Half an hour, after Philip's body trembled, he withdrew from the game. Sir, how did you do it? We just wanted to start building the skills of the game characters. Philip Barabara said a lot excitedly, and then the whole person seemed to be discouraged. Although this game is the same as the one in his imagination, it appeared in someone else's hands. Since you have completely perfected this game, why are you looking for me? Philip is now like a toy that has been spoiled by a child, and he has lost the passion to introduce their game to Yi Fei just now. I understand how hard it is for you to make this game, and I can feel that you love this industry, and I'm right. Hearing Yi Fei's words, 
Philip looked up at Yi Fei. How about it? Follow me. I'm responsible for providing you with ideas for making games, as well as funds and salary shares. You just need to make the game well. Yi Fei directly threw out his big move, throwing money at people, and he knew that the people in front of him had no way out except to follow him. After all, knowing so many middlemen, it is still very simple for them to check Philip's details. Philip's current funds are running out, and even a quarrel broke out in the studio yesterday, Yi Fei knows these details clearly. This is the terrifying intelligence network of the middlemen in Night City at the bottom. Okay, but you need to pay the development fee of our game in the early stage. Philip gritted his teeth, he also knew that he had no other way to go. After all, his money was spent now. Is it possible to refuse Yi Fei and watch the other party take the game to the market and make a lot of money while they sit and drink the northwest wind? As for suing Yi Fei, no kidding, they only have a semi-finished game in their hands. Yi Fei's game is already an excellent finished game. Go and tell the judge that you developed it first, and see if they agree. Okay, tell me the number, I will give you the salary of the first few months. Yi Fei said with a smile. In the end, after Yi Fei paid Philip 45,000 euros, he has already incorporated this potential game studio. Of course, at this stage, Yi Fei's financial resources cannot afford an office building in the city. It needs further listing and then withdrawing funds to have capital to buy or lease offices. Yi Fei, if you invest so much money now, aren't you afraid that you won't be able to get back the money later? V said worriedly while driving the Mizutani Hayabusa he bought two days ago. Although they received a lot of commissions this week, the income of 45,000 euros was almost enough to empty Yi Fei's wallet. After all, Yi Fei has covered the food expenses for V and Lucy for the past few days. If Regina hadn't done a good job in catching two cyber psychopaths alive, Regina would have given Yi Fei 8,000 euros. Today's acquisition of the studio maybe Yi Fei has to ask V for money. I'm really optimistic about the prospects of the game V, just look at it, as long as it goes public, we will have more money, and besides, we can accept more commissions. But these days I will rely on you to live. Hearing Yi Fei's words, V gave him a blank look because Yi Fei was responsible for their food, and Yi Fei bought the apartment in full, so it is only natural for V to support him. Okay, okay, look at you, come and give me a smile. Just after V finished speaking provocatively, the two cars directly in front of them began to exchange fire, and there was still a car in the middle that could not move. Actually, Mom, I'm wondering if I should take a break from school to find a job or something. David shook his feet with some annoyance and said, what the hell are you talking about? Gloria looked at David in surprise and said loudly. Oh, mom, you should know that we really can't afford the maintenance costs of the system, right? And I'm like an outlier in school, these things, mom, you don't know. And we poor people don't have any money in school, will not be taken seriously. No matter how good my grades are, they won't take a second look, and to be honest, I don't want to be like them. David said with a trace of fatigue on his face, to be honest, if he didn't understand his mother, he would not have wanted to go to Wangban Academy. The rich boys and buddies in it are all people who don't like him. In their eyes, a poor man's going to the Wangban Academy is like tarnishing them. After a few seconds of silence, Gloria said tremblingly, then, what do you think I'm working so hard for? I work day and night just to, so that you have a chance to stand out. Dot but now you, say you don't want to go to school anymore. Mom, what you said. David turned his head and glanced at Gloria, who was about to say something, but stopped because Gloria, who had never cried in front of him, had tears in her eyes. You are so smart and talented, so I have worked so hard to get you the best education, and now you don't want to study, what do you want me to do? How could Gloria not know what David said? It was because she knew these things that she wanted David to study at Arban Academy and enter the company in the future to get rid of the current situation. Phew, I see. I'm sorry, Mom. I shouldn't have said that. So don't cry anymore. I'll go to school. David said helplessly. I know how you were treated in school, and how those people treated you. I have experienced those things before, but I gave up and became what I am now. That's why I want you to prove that our abilities are no worse than theirs. I want you to give full play to your talents, become an elite, and then climb to the top of the Baron Tower and become a master. 
Clatter, clatter, clatter. Before Gloria finished speaking, there were sudden gunshots from both sides. The members of the animal gang in the car shouted frantically. TCH, the cars of these company dogs are all bulletproof, they can't be pierced. The driver glanced at the car that had been shot with dozens of bullets but had no damage and said angrily. Ha ha, luckily I brought this. The little boy of the animal gang, who leaned out of the car with half his body, bent down and took out a bazooka from the car. Let them taste the power of our animal gang. Boom, phew, boom. A bazooka exploded behind the company car, flipping the entire vehicle over. Yahoo! X2! The driver of the animal gang avoided the overturned company car and drove away. Mom! Feel the brakes! Brake! David yelled in horror. I'm braking! The same goes for Gloria! Mom! As soon as David finished yelling, they collided with the company car. Boom! For a moment, the company car that was hit again exploded in flames, and Gloria's car was blown upside down. David is trapped in the car while Gloria is thrown out. These fools of the animal gang have to open fire on this road. Yi Fei looked at the scene of the car accident in front of him, a little familiar, but he couldn't say it was familiar there. No way, we can only wait for NCPD to deal with it now. V shook his head. They had encountered this kind of thing countless times in the first week of their stay in Night City, and V was already somewhat accustomed to it. Mom, are you okay, Mom? David looked at Gloria who was not far away from him in the car and shouted. Gloria seemed to hear David's call, and her body moved a little, but she didn't move after just trying. Yi Fei, who was not far from the scene of the car accident, heard the voice. I am super. David, Yi Fei glanced at the scene of the car accident with strange eyes, and then activated the supervision that had been awakened in the past two days. Saw Gloria at the scene of the car accident. V, wait here first, I'll go take a look. Yi Fei walked forward after saying a word. Trauma team on scene. A floating vehicle with trauma team written on it landed in the open area of the crash scene. Great, it's the trauma team, save. David felt hopeful when he saw the trauma team land. A trauma team member then used a machine to scan David and Gloria before saying something that made David despair. This person is not our client. Nor is this woman. We want to ensure the safety of our customers and we leave those people to the council's body van and the NCPD. The head of the trauma team ordered. Receive. David felt bad when he heard this. Wait. What are you doing? Do you want us to wait here to die? Hey. Seeing that the trauma team's floating vehicle had flown away, David fell into complete despair. Stop barking. At this time, Yi Fei walked up to David, and then tore off the car door with one hand, untied David, and dragged David out. After being put down by Yi Fei, David ran straight to Gloria's side. Just as he was about to shake his hands, he heard Yi Fei's words. If you don't want her to die now, I advise you not to touch her. Yi Fei's supervision can clearly see that a rib in Gloria's chest has been inserted into her lungs. If David shakes Gloria at this time, maybe it will speed up Gloria. A condition in which the body bleeds. After listening to Yi Fei's words, David didn't dare to touch Gloria with his hands. He looked around anxiously. He was stopped by a company car in front of him, and the road behind was leading to Wangban Academy. We'll take care of this stuff. Then he saw Yi Fei behind him. I beg you, save my mother. Regardless of his injuries, David knelt down in front of Yi Fei. Tisk, it's been more than a hundred years since the Qing dynasty died, and you're still kneeling here. Yi Fei said something that David couldn't understand at all. Then he walked to the front and kicked the company car blocked in the middle of the road into the lake below. At this time, V had already driven the car to the scene of the accident. Then Yi Fei carefully carried Gloria into their car looked at David who was still kneeling on the spot stupidly, and said, how long are you going to kneel there, get in the car. Only then did David recover from the shock of seeing Yi Fei kick the company car away. Okay, David looked at the handsome Mizutani Falcon in front of him, and got into the car in a daze. Yi Fei, this is not like what you do. When did you become so enthusiastic? V looked at Yi Fei with some teasing and said, although Yi Fei is usually very kind to his own people, he always treats other people in Night City with a cold look. Like this kind of car accident, they met no less than five times this week. 
every time Yi Fei waited for people from NCPD or City Hall to clean up the mess before leaving. I actually took the initiative to help today, didn't I? Thinking of this, V glanced at Gloria who was lying on the back seat. Although this woman is not bad, it is not enough for Yi Fei to help out for this. It's just a matter of raising your hands, let's send them to the hospital first, here you go, use this pneumatic injector. Yi Fei said indifferently, then took out a pneumatic syringe with a blue casing and threw it into David's arms. David injected Gloria with the pneumatic syringe he had learned how to use at Arabata Academy. Ahem. After using the pneumatic injector, Gloria coughed twice, then opened her eyes in a daze and saw David. David, where are we? Mom, we are in the car now, and a kind gentleman is pulling us to the hospital. When David saw Gloria wake up, he was a little excited, and then he looked at Yi Fei who was sitting in the co-pilot seat very gratefully and said. Just call me Yi Fei, and the beauty next to me is called V. Yi Fei said lazily, basking in the sun with the window open. Yi Fei. In a daze, Gloria felt a little familiar when she heard the name, as if she had heard someone say it. Dot dot dot. Then Yi Fei didn't say much, and sent David and the others to the nearest hospital. The facilities here are much better than the hospital David went to. At least the doctors here are still wearing white coats, unlike the doctors over there who are dressed like butchers. Of course, the money was also advanced by Yi Fei. Brother Yi, I really don't know how to thank you. After seeing Gloria being pushed into the operating room, David breathed a sigh of relief, and then looked gratefully at Yi Fei who was standing beside him drinking a drink. To be honest, in their situation, if they don't have the money to buy members of the trauma team, if they encounter that kind of thing, they want to wait for the NCPD to come, I'm afraid it's not until they are burned to ashes or their car explodes to death. So Yi Fei is their savior. Yi Fei looked at David's immature face, and honestly, if he didn't know this character, Yi Fei wouldn't bother. You don't need to thank me, it's not free for me to help you. Hearing Yi Fei's words, David raised his head and replied seriously, I know, but I still want to thank you. Of course, David knew that all of this was definitely not free, after all, the relationship between people in Night City was never pure. But even so, David is still very grateful to Yi Fei, after all, who would take the risk to save someone in that situation? It's just that after seeing Yi Fei's rescue process, David fell into the idea of longing for power. Whether it was pulling open a jammed car door with one hand or kicking a two or three ton car into the air with one foot, David's nerves were deeply impacted by these. Brother Yi, I want to ask you, are you the Yi Fei who is famous among mercenaries recently? David asked cautiously. From the time he got in the car and heard V calling Yi Fei's name, David remembered that one of the super dreams that the doctor asked him to sell was very popular. And the protagonists in these super dreams are all Yi Fei. From that perspective, Yi Fei can easily deal with those gangsters or the company dogs who want to support them later. They are all crushing. That's right, it's the recent collaboration between Yi Fei and Judy. Yi Fei always went back to the Ritz bar to let Judy record Cheomung after finishing the commission. Because of this, Yi Fei also has a lot of income, and even Judy is very happy for Yi Fei to find her recently. After all, Yi Fei can bring Judy a lot of income every time he visits Judy. The pleasure brought by Yi Fei's perspective, whether it's those gangsters who are not happy on the street, or some people who work in the company popular among employees. After all, in Cheomong, they can all feel the terrible power of Yi Fei, just like they themselves have that kind of power. Of course, in Night City, apart from Judy, only Jimmy Kurosaki has the ability to make this kind of black super dream. It's just that Yi Fei won't let that Jimmy enter his super dream and mess around casually, who knows what he will do. Although Jimmy Kurosaki has also approached him many times in the past few days, saying that he can help Yi Fei make a more popular black super dream. At first Yi Fei was polite to him, but she always declined. But after being interrupted by Jimmy Kurosaki for the tenth time, Yi Fei got angry and directly blocked the other party. After all, he was interrupted during his night run with Lucy, how could Yi Fei not be angry? Well, the mercenary in Night City is still called Yi Fei, and there should be no one else but me. Hearing Yi Fei's confirmed words, David was excited. Brother Yi, I'm a big fan of your Cheomong. Your perspective is so powerful that you can feel your power even in Cheomong. After all, 
This is one of the few ways David can find entertainment, and David also sold Yi Fei's Super Dream in the Academy. Although two-thirds of the proceeds from the sale had to be given to the prosthetic doctor, this really made David a small fortune. At least he can afford the cost of washing the wardrobe at home, which can be regarded as a little burden for Gloria. Hee <laughs> hee, it's okay. Although being flattered by David made Yi Fei a little bit flattered, he still said with a bit of aloofness on his face. The appearance of Yi Fei made David believe that Yi Fei is a master. He had read some books decades ago since he was a child. It is recorded in the Wabwo on the other side of the ocean that there were many martial arts masters before the global prosthetic body, but if you want to practice martial arts, you need to go through years of exercise and a lot of practice. Prosthetics can surpass these masters' decades of hard training in one day, so Wabwo Kung Fu has declined. And Yi Fei's recent co-released Mewtwo with Zudi really made David feel like a martial arts master. Half an hour later, a doctor in a white coat walked out of the operating room. Which gentleman is David Martinez? Here here. David replied holding up his hand. Well, Mr. David, Ms. Gloria's operation was successful, and she only needs to be observed in the hospital for two days before she can be discharged. In the cyberpunk world, Various medical systems are already perfect and advanced. In the anime, many people speculated that Gloria was already dead when she was sent to the hospital. It was just that the doctor wanted to ask David for more information. He lied that Gloria could still be saved because of too much money. Now Gloria was rescued by Yi Fei in time, and a high-quality pneumatic syringe was used, and she was sent to a hospital with complete medical facilities so that Gloria is now safe and sound. It's just that we found that Ms. Gloria's physical condition is actually fatigued for a long time, which is very bad for patients, so we suggest that Ms. Gloria can take more rest. The doctor's words made David fall into deep thought again. Hello, Mr. David. These are Ms. Gloria's personal items. A nurse with prosthetic hands took Gloria's clothes and handed them to David in a box. After all this was done, the doctors and nurses left, leaving only V, Yi Fei and David who stayed where they were. After a long silence, David looked up at Yi Fei beside him and said, Brother Yi, can I be a mercenary with you? Yi Fei waited for a long time just waiting for David's words, otherwise he wouldn't have the leisure to stay here for so long. David, I want you to think before you say anything like that. Although he knew that Gloria's clothes contained a First Order Sean Weistein, Yi Fei didn't say so, after all, he didn't want David or V to suspect him. Yi Fei's words made David, whose eyes were full of hope, fall into deep thought, yes, why can I work with Yi Fei, a mercenary and super dream star who is now famous in Night City. This is my contact information. Call me later if you have something to do. Of course, it's best if you have the money back. After speaking, Yi Fei signaled to V that it was time to leave, leaving David who was deep in thought to stay where he was in a daze. V in the car looked at Yi Fei and asked with some doubts, Yi Fei, what you did today is a bit strange, does that brat have something that you can admire? Others don't know Yi Fei, how can V not know? Although Yi Fei treats his partners very well and never cares about the money, but at the same time Yi Fei is also a person who does not see the rabbit and does not throw the eagle. Even when he went to talk to Philip about the studio today, Yi Fei squeezed the benefits he could get to the extreme. Of course, this will not affect Philip's work for him. Since Yi Fei went to rescue the man named David Martinez, and went to the hospital for surgery and Yi Fei paid for the medical expenses, V couldn't see what benefit Yi Fei could get from it. It can be said that it is all about generating electricity for love, and a student can't see where it can create value for Yi Fei. V I have a hunch that this David is likely to become a very good thug in our team, and this is my reason. The reason Yi Fei gave was very far-fetched but he couldn't tell V that he had watched anime in his previous life, and he knew David was a potential stock, so he went to save him. I'm afraid it wasn't because V turned the car around and went back to the hospital to ask the doctor to check if there is something wrong with Yi Fei's brain. HMPH, forget it, I won't ask if you don't want to say it, but you seem to have a good relationship with Lucy recently. V asked with a meaningful smile. V's words immediately cheered Yi Fei up to 200,000 points, he knew that the only thing he could do now with this kind of problem was to get along with it. Otherwise, his dog's life might be lost. No, I'm just going to run at night with Lucy, what can I do? Yi Fei said calmly. 
At this time, Yi Fei showed a strong ability to manage emotions and adjust micro expressions. After all, now V is frantically scanning his face with her prosthetic eye. Although he has written a program these days to install a program that automatically counters people who scan him. But he's been ignoring the barrage of warnings that pop up from the system right now. I think so, how could Lucy see a man younger than her? V scanned for a few minutes but didn't find any clues, so he continued driving. Ha, huh, seeing V's appearance, Yi Fei also heaved a sigh of relief. After all, he doesn't want to give up anyone now, and the only way to live a new life is to be happy. But in the current situation, if he dares to admit that he talked and laughed with Lucy during the night run and went to eat supper, based on his understanding of V, I am afraid that V will bring him and Lucy together if it is not tonight. Salute and throw out of the apartment together. Well, what's going on, why doesn't Gloria answer the phone? Man looked impatiently at the contact interface in front of him where no one answered after making five or six calls. Dorio saw Man's impatient face and knew why he was so irritable. After all, Gloria called them yesterday and told them that she had a military-style Cienbestine prosthesis in her hand. This made Man call Gloria 20,000 euros on the spot, which was simply a bargaining chip for his prosthetic transformation to a higher level. Besides, Man, when are you going to kill those fools for me? Man makes a call that he doesn't even want to take now. Is there something wrong with you? Didn't you see how loud those guys' names are these days? Man was very upset because he found out that the person Toby Jace asked them to kill that day was the hot mercenary team in Night City. You, I paid you, if you can't do it, you can return the money to me. I will find someone else. Toby Jaisi shouted angrily, now he can't control Yi Fei's reputation at all. In his opinion, Yi Fei must have used the money from selling the mutated green-haired lizard to pretend to be expensive. The prosthetic body has risen in a short period of time. The fame Yi Fei and the others got should belong to him, Toby Jaisi. Get out of your way. 5,000 euros for us to do this kind of work. Get out, trash. After Man heard what Toby Jaisi said, he directly transferred the 5,000 ohms back, and then directly hung up the call of this little middleman who didn't know whether he was dead or alive. He can also be regarded as a relatively top notch mercenary in Night City, but Yi Fei's reputation is really a bit loud these days. For Toby Jace's 5,000 euros, it is obvious that Yi Fei's hard steel unwise. Man, what did you just say to Toby Jace? Dorio sat beside Man and said with some doubts. It's nothing, this stupid Toby actually wants us to do that Yi Fei, and the dog will not do this shit for only 5,000 euros. To be honest, there were also commissions for fighting between mercenaries, but mercenaries of the level of Yi Fei's team would have to pay at least 40,000 euros to do so. Otherwise, who will die? What's more, the current Toby Jays has long since left the middleman profession, and man's order from him is at best a personal order. Returning the money to Toby Jaisi -E is not a bad idea, if you change to other mercenaries, the money will be blackmailed directly. Even if you don't want to do this commission, you shouldn't be so angry. Dorio looked at man with some doubts. To be honest, she felt that man's temper became more and more irritable at some point. I don't know if it's an illusion. It would be strange if I didn't say anything to be underestimated by a middleman like this. Man said angrily. In fact, his anger is not mainly because of Toby Jays, but that the intermediaries he used to cooperate with him will now intentionally or unintentionally distribute some of the commissions that would have been entrusted to him to the recently famous Yi. Fei. Yi Fei's recent commissions are basically completed perfectly, whether it is to steal from the company dog, to assassinate, or to save people, they can be perfectly completed. This makes those middlemen like to assign entrustment to Yi Fei. After all, their customers are naturally more satisfied and will give more money if they complete their tasks perfectly. No, if Gloria can't be reached tonight, I'm going to go find her. After adding up all the reasons, man became more and more eager for Sean Weistein in Gloria's hands. Dorio, who was sitting next to man, didn't say much when she heard this. As the person with the best relationship with man, she naturally knew how much pressure man was under. There is no way out of the way of mercenaries except to go up. The final consequences of each mission are basically borne by mercenaries. Those people don't have the guts to deal with those top intermediaries with huge power and financial resources. 
David's house. David went home and sorted out some of Gloria's belongings, and finally found Sean Weistein among Gloria's clothes. Combined with the loss of military prosthetic bodies heard several times on the radio today, David's breathing became more and more short. After taking a photo of Sean Weston, David sent the photo to the prosthetic doctor he knew. Got a quick reply. Where did you kid get the military version of Seinvestine? Seeing the doctor's reply, David suddenly became very excited. Because today's medical expenses are paid by Yifei, so now David is not as desperate as in the anime. When he found Sean Weistein, his first reaction was not to think about how much money this thing has. Instead, he wondered if he would have the capital to join Yifei's mercenary team if he installed this thing on his body. David rang out at noon today, Yifei's every move, the sense of security brought by the absolute power and the gap between when he was desperate and could only watch and wait to die made David's pursuit of power and Yifei's. This kind of power made David's incomparable longing from longing. Doctor, can you help me if I say I want to put this thing on me? After David sent the message, the doctor saw it and immediately called David. Have you gone crazy, kid? This is not something you can afford. The prosthetic doctor is telling the truth now, after all, even the original owner of the prosthetic body is a colonel with military technology, the kind who has experienced corporate wars. This kind of prosthetic body that a person's will can't bear is not something David, a student who is still in school, can bear. Although it is not necessarily all because of Sean Weistein, but Sean Weston has a large part of the reason why he became cyber-psychopathic. You, today, because of the pirated chip you gave me, I scrapped the teaching system of the college. I didn't settle this account with you. David now just wants to put this prosthetic body on his body to gain strength. Others can't handle so much anymore. Tisk, okay, okay, then you bring that thing to me, and I'll put it on for you. After the prosthetic doctor finished speaking, he hung up the phone. David stared at Sean Weistein in his clothes with burning eyes. Ding. David glanced at the caller. Katsuo Tanaka, what is this guy doing on the phone? David didn't think much about calming down before answering the phone. What do you want to do? David said in a cold tone, although those people at school said they looked down on him, they still recognized his ability after all, only Katsuo Tanaka didn't care about those at all. He has been ridiculing David all the time, and even often drags David to the garbage station of the college for bullying. The reason is also very outrageous, saying that he wants to try the latest kung fu chip he installed. David, you don't have to be so cold. After all, we are still classmates. I heard that you and your mother had a car accident. Although I know you need sympathy for this, I really can't sympathize. Why, after all, your mother is a person who committed crimes so that her son could afford to go to Wangban College. Ah, what a great mother, but it's a pity that God finally punished her for her crimes. Quote, I think she should be waiting to die in the hospital now. After all, I don't think a family like yours can afford the hospital's medical expenses. Even if she is still dying now, maybe she will die tomorrow. These are her punishments for breaking the law and committing crimes to make money, so people like you can only rot in the slums and become a gangster, and then one day you will die as humble as your mother. Katsuo Tanaka hung up the phone without waiting for David to reply after mocking him. Katsuo Tanaka. David's eyes were full of anger. After the car accident that almost lost his mother today, David put the matter of protecting his mother at the top of his heart. As a result, Katsuo Tanaka sneered at him like this and even made insulting remarks to Gloria. He was holding Cyan Wiston's hand more and more vigorously, and now he only had one thought in his mind. Become stronger. Must become stronger. Woohoo. This girl doesn't rub her body. The prosthetic doctor lying on the operating chair is looking at his newly arrived black Cheomong. Visitors arrive. Seeing these four typing prosthetic doctors, he took off the Cheomong equipment he was carrying and saw David standing at the door panting. Ha, huh, is this the Sean Weston that all the mercenaries in the city are looking for? It's really a good baby. Glancing at the prosthetic body in David's hand, he confirmed once again that it was the military prosthetic body Seinvestine that the whole city had been looking for these two days. But I've also told you that this thing is really dangerous. I advise you to sell it to me. How about if I can pay you 10,000 euros? The prosthetic doctor looked greedily at the Sean Whiston in David's hand, and he only told half the truth. 
Although this thing is dangerous, for those mercenaries who are on the verge of death every day, this thing is like their second life. Let alone 10,000 euros, even 20,000 euros, there are mercenaries willing to buy them. I said, I want to install it on my body. David stared at the prosthetic doctor with a very dangerous look in his eyes and said, he is like a wolf who wants to put this prosthetic body on right now, and then beat Katsuo Tanaka severely. TCH, you brat who doesn't know the heights of the heavens and the earth. The prosthetic doctor said something a little uncomfortable, but he still agreed to help David install the prosthesis. After all, he has known David for quite a long time, and the Cheomung that David sold recently also made him a lot of money. 10 o'clock in the morning. A certain classroom at Arabata Academy. David walked into the classroom slowly. David Martins, I'm sorry you've been marked late. The cold voice of the projection robot that was in class sounded, which caught the attention of Katsuo Tanaka who was in class. Hey, isn't this David, our three good student? We're already halfway through class, you're just, rely on me. Katsuo Tanaka spoke in a mocking tone, and was kicked off the chair by David. Are you crazy? This is a school, no matter which classroom is monitored. Katsuo Tanaka said while suppressing his anger, but this time he was interrupted by David's fist again. If you are still talking nonsense, I will find it very boring. If you have the guts, you can stand up and tell me what you said yesterday. David's words fell into Katsuo Tanaka's ears very coldly. For some reason, after hearing this sentence, he felt a little fear in his heart, which made him feel a little ashamed. Then he turned over and stood up, looking at David in front of him, he launched an attack. Ah, da 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 da. Katsuo Tanaka's fist had an afterimage effect for a while, and then he sent out a real attack and hit David in the face. Inferior, you can only be beaten down by me again. Katsuo Tanaka thought in his heart, but suddenly he found that David in front of him disappeared, and then a fist was hitting his face. Boom. David's full blow and a little use of the acceleration kinetic energy provided by Sean Weistein, hit Katsuo Tanaka to the wall with one punch. Ah, you, what kind of strange prosthetic body is that? My nose was broken. You are finished. My dad is the school manager. I must let you get out of Arban Academy. Katsuo Tanaka touched his crooked nose, pointed at David with horror and anger and said. Seeing this usually arrogant guy look like a wimp now, David suddenly lost interest in continuing to attack him. When someone looks down on you, you want to beat him, and when you beat him, you will feel that person is just like that. It's up to you, I don't want to stay in this crappy school anymore. David said calmly, Katsuo Tanaka is done with revenge now. His next goal is to join Yifei in their mercenary squad. Dot dot dot, you gang of scumbags who cut their kidneys, anyone dares to kidnap. Jack looked at the scavenger lying motionless on the ground with disdain and cursed. While cursing and kicking, he wouldn't look down on Jack even if he was a beggar in this city, except for these scavengers. Most of these scavengers are low-level, murderous scum, who are used to attacking unsuspecting passers by or hooligans. Harvest their cybernetic bodies and organs and sell them on the black market. In their eyes, Human life is just a bunch of cobbled together commodities that can be exchanged for money in the black market. And the scavengers don't have any philosophy or purpose, they are just selfish and profit-seeking. The organization is also very loose and only integrated through a single sales channel. They didn't have a fixed base, they were scattered all over Night City looking for prey to attack. There is no fixed hierarchy, usually a small group of like-minded people led by the most ruthless and cunning leader among them. If possible, they don't even recommend cutting off their companions' body parts and selling them. It's almost Jack. If you really don't like it, they will be shot down. Yi Fei placed the target of this commission on the edge of the balcony and then retreated into the room. This time, the target was a rich girl with a familiar name Yi Fei. Sandella Dorset. Well, it's the first mission in the game. Has the plot started yet? Yi Fei murmured, to be honest, he still wants to develop a little longer, after all, he is not sure whether he can withstand a nuclear bomb. Yi Fei, are you worried about something? V standing beside Yi Fei saw Yi Fei's abnormality, and asked softly. Nothing, just thought of something. Yi Fei shook his head, there is no way that only he knows these things, and it is useless to say it directly even if V believes him. 
It's better to develop well now, so that you can get a share of the future when the dead board is dry. Ding. Yi Fei received a phone call that he expected. Hey David, did you call me for something? Yi Fei said knowingly. He knew that David must have installed Sean Whiston on his body, and now David must be looking for him to join him. Brother Yi, can I meet you now? David, who was walking outside Arban Academy, asked a little nervously. Okay, you can come to the Wild Wolf Bar to find me. After Yi Fei finished speaking, he hung up the phone. Yi Fei and the others only had an order for San Della Dorset today, and the original plan was to go to Jack's mother's bar for a drink after finishing. David was extremely excited when he heard Yi Fei agreeing to see him, and then he glanced at the Arban Academy behind him with some mixed emotions. This place that carried all the dreams of his mother Gloria for him completely cut off contact with him. He has no nostalgia for this academy, only shame for Gloria. But since he chose to have with Yi Fei, he has no turning back. It's not that he completely lost his mind when he beat Katsuo Tanaka in public, but he did it because he wanted to completely cut off his way back to school. Yi Fei, you just answered a call, who is it? Asked Jack. An interesting kid, maybe he will surprise us. Yi Fei smiled and took a sip of beer. Yi Fei, don't you mean the one you saved yesterday? V looked at Yi Fei with some surprise and said. She didn't forget the one named David yesterday, after all, he owed Yi Fei 3,000 euros. It's just that David yesterday was just a student. No matter how the time changes overnight, he can't become a level mercenary, right? Oh, Yi Fei, why are you still interested? Tell me about what happened yesterday. Hearing what V said, Jack also became interested. After getting along with him this week, Jack also knows that Yi Fei is a person who does not see the rabbit and does not stalk the eagle. Since Yi Fei can lend a helping hand, then there must be something special about that person. A little thing. Yi Fei didn't get impatient either, and told everything about what happened yesterday. After finishing speaking, Lucy and Jack looked as confused as V yesterday. I said Yi Fei, you just want to save people and you won't even pay for the medical bills. It seems that you still don't know much about the sinister people in Night City. When Jack was about to start a long speech, a teenager in a yellow shirt sat across from him, and then he picked up the unopened beer on the table and drank it. Ahem, sure enough, I'm still not used to this kind of thing. David coughed after taking a sip of beer. Hey, you, it's very rude to drink in someone else's booth without any reason, do you know that? Jack said angrily as soon as he realized it. Jack, don't you want to see him? Why are you so angry that he's here? Yi Fei said calmly. Jack didn't realize it until he heard Yi Fei's words. David seemed to appear in front of them suddenly. He he, it seems that you have installed some scary things on yourself. Yi Fei looked at David in front of him with a smile and said. David didn't say much, he turned around and took off his coat to reveal Sean Weistein on his back. How about it? This is a military grade prosthetic body Cyan Weistein, brother Yi, can I join your mercenary group? David looked at Yi Fei confidently and said, in his opinion, being able to use a military-grade prosthetic body is a relatively unique existence, right? The thing on your body shouldn't be the prosthetic body of the cyber psychopath a few days ago. Yes, it's that guy's prosthetic body. David nodded. He had just figured it out that this should be the prosthetic body that Gloria took along when she went to clean up the cyberpsychotic scene the day before yesterday. Otherwise, he would not be able to explain where the prosthetic body came from. Oh, then you can show me one. Seeing David's confident look, Yi Fei immediately thought of hitting him. It is good. After David heard Yi Fei's words, he activated the Sean Weston directly, and then prepared to take the bottle of beer from Yi Fei's hand. Swish. Just when David's hand was about to touch the bottle of beer, Yi Fei also started to move in a world where activation was like time pause in his eyes. Moreover, that speed seems to be faster than him. During the acceleration time, David was chasing Yi Fei, trying to get the beer in his hand, but no matter how fast he was, Yi Fei could catch up with him at a faster speed. Ha ha ha, accelerating the end of the world, Yi Fei and David appeared outside the deck. Compared with Yi Fei's relaxed face, David's sweaty face is very obvious. David, although I don't want to pour cold water on you at this time, if you want to target Yi Fei, I advise you to give up this idea. 
Jack also knows the effect of Sean Weston, after all, he has known Victor for so long and chatted with him. Knowing that the effect of this military prosthesis is to speed up the user, but it is still too naive to compare this kind of thing with Yi Fei. The first morning Yi Fei came to Night City, he fought against the terrorist mobile squad. Which one of those guys didn't have Sean Weston? None of the five or six members of the NCPD terrorist mobile team were able to stop Yi Fei that day, let alone the current David. Besides, which of those guys didn't install Sean Weston? However, you're pretty good, you can actually use Sean Weston. But your small body is already at its limit this time, isn't it? Jack shook his head understandingly. Chapter 41 No, I've used this thing before. David said with sweat profusely that although Sean Weston could indeed accelerate him, he didn't know why he always felt dizzy after every acceleration. Jack was a little surprised by David's words. Of course, Jack also knew about the cyber psychopath who had participated in the war two days ago, but he was also concerned about Sean Weistein, even if he didn't pretend to be this thing. Selling it to Victor can also make a small profit, but he didn't have too many thoughts when he saw David wearing Sean Weistein, after all, he was also Yi Fei's fancy. But after your kid used this prosthetic body, why didn't you inject yourself with immunosuppressive fluid? Jack suddenly remembered that something was wrong. Immunosuppressant fluid, what is that? David asked confusedly. Yi Fei, the person you're looking for is too crazy. It's a madman who dares to install this level of prosthetic body without even knowing about immunosuppressant fluid. Hearing David's response, Jack also looked at Yi Fei speechlessly and said. Pull you down, let's go, I'll take you to see the prosthetic doctor. Yi Fei gave Jack a blank look and then told David that he didn't really trust the prosthetic doctor he saw in the anime. With a reliable doctor like Victor, why would he go to that crazy-looking prosthetic doctor? Inside Victor's clinic, Yi Fei, where did the kid you bring get Sean Weistein? Victor glanced at David and said to Yi Fei with a strange expression on his face. It's hard to say, Victor, you can show him, just as he said, he has used Sean Weistein a few times. Yi Fei said, okay, Kid, let me take a look for you. Seeing that Yi Fei didn't want to say anything, Victor didn't ask any more questions and checked with David. Well, it's nothing serious. Yi Fei seems to have a much better tolerance for prosthetic bodies than ordinary people. After checking, Victor found that David's nervous system was more active than normal, and this was the case of using Sean Weistein. Generally speaking, after using the prosthetic body, the body will experience a certain degree of nervous malaise, but David's nervous system can still remain more active than normal. What this brings to David is that he is more able to tolerate the consumption of the prosthesis on the human body than ordinary people. Even so, he probably needs immunosuppressants. Yi Fei said, he also knew that David could use the prosthetic body more times than ordinary people, but it was not unlimited, that is, two or three times that of ordinary people. That's right. If this young man uses C-Investin a few times, he will die soon, boy, I will prescribe you a little immunosuppressant. Give yourself an injection if you feel dizzy, and it's best not to use more than six times a day with C-Investin. Victor said and took out a few small needles from his cabinet. I'll just give you as much as you want. Hee <laughs> hee, Yi Fei, we are quite familiar with each other. I will only charge you 500 euros for these inhibitors. Yi Fei believed Victor's words, although compared with the game, treating V like his own child was still a bit worse. But judging from the quality and workmanship of the prosthetic bodies installed by Yi Fei and the others in Victor, at least Victor regards Yi Fei and the others as his own. Without saying anything, Yi Fei directly transferred 500 euros to Victor. Brother Yi, this money, why do you say so much, I have work for you this afternoon, and I will deduct it from your salary at that time. Seeing what David was going to say again, Yi Fei waved his hand, since David was brought to Victor by them, they have already regarded him as one of their own. I will definitely not let you down. Hearing David's promise, Yi Fei smiled. Dot dot dot. Afternoon, outside a stronghold of the Japanese Street Tiger Claw Gang. You have to go in and insert this chip into their computer this time. I have already sent you their internal structure diagram. Go in this time just like going back to your own home. Don't startle the snake, Lucy will help you hack into the security system, of. Uh. Yi Fei patted David on the shoulder and said, 
then pointed to Lucy who was fiddled with the computer in the back seat with a cold face. Lucy just looked up at David, then lowered her head and continued to invade the security system of the Tiger Claw gang. In the past few days, Lucy and Yifei have practiced hacking the system more than once, which has made Lucy's hacking skills progress rapidly. If it is described by the expertise in the game, Lucy should be a hacker with an intelligence of 16. Okay, don't worry, brother Yi. After finishing his speech, David received the structural picture from Yifei and set off. Yifei, how long do you think it will take for this kid to come out? Jack sat in the car and said a little bored. A few minutes. Hey, I guess he will scare the snake, how can I say, 500 euros to better not. To be honest, Jack didn't like this kind of entrustment anymore, and the reward was only 3,000 euros. Most of the commissions they received this week were paid tens of thousands of euros. Yifei would not have accepted such a small commission if he hadn't wanted to train David. Bet on the hammer, do you want me to tell Misty? Yi Fei didn't bother to pay attention to these things, the situation was changing rapidly and no one could guarantee whether the car would overturn. While Yi Fei and the others were still talking, David had successfully bypassed the younger brother of the Tiger Claw gang outside the stronghold and entered the building. David, there's a Tiger Claw guy right in front of you with a shotgun in his hand, go and break his neck or you won't be able to get into their office. In front of Yifei's eyes are the pictures of all the cameras in the building of the Tiger Claw Gang. With Yifei's eyesight and brain power, he can observe the movements of all the members of the Tiger Claw Gang. Here, Brother Yi, can I bypass this person and go directly to their office? Hearing that Yifei asked him to break the neck of the strong man three meters in front of him, David asked very nervously. Also, hearing Yifei's reply, David breathed a sigh of relief, and then Yifei said lightly, you come out, go home and be your good student, this road is not suitable for you. That's right, no matter what kind of person you are on the road of mercenaries, killing people is unavoidable. Sometimes you can't even have compassion, otherwise the person who begged you for mercy one second might take the gun in his hand and give you a headshot. No need, brother Yi, I'll break this guy's neck. David had no way out now, he went to beat up Katsuo Tanaka in the morning, and he beat him under the supervision of the academy. Now I guess I have already been expelled from Wangban Academy. If I can't hang out with Yifei, I guess he will be a street gangster in his life. Gritting his teeth, he quietly lurked behind this strong man from the Tiger Claw Gang, even though he had made up his mind to break this guy's neck. But how does he have that kind of strength? David, I will temporarily shut down this guy's system. He will have no resistance within 10 seconds and then I will hand it over to you. Lucy's voice reached David's ears, and then David found that the big man in front of him had fallen to the ground motionless. What are you still doing? Two seconds have passed. When Yifei's voice came out, David finally realized that he grabbed the strong man's head with both hands, and then twisted it hard. Click. There was a crisp sound of bones, and the strong man in front of him who was still breathing when he fell down had stopped breathing in heartbeat. David felt sick for a while. To be honest, even if he lived in Night City, he must have seen dead people even if he had never killed anyone. Moreover, although David had been a killer countless times in Jimmy Kurosaki's Black Super Dream, he personally killing still made him feel completely disgusted. A feeling of wanting to vomit came up in his throat, but David swallowed it in the end. Take the access card on his body, go into the office, choose the largest computer, and plug in the chip. Yi Fei's voice came again. Then David picked up the yellow access control card on the big man and ran to the door of the office, went in and inserted the chip into the computer. Well, good, you can come out as soon as the progress bar on the screen is full. Hearing this, David sat down directly on the chair next to him, still digesting the nausea caused by the murder just now. Inside the car, Yi Fei, isn't it a bit embarrassing for David to ask him to kill someone for the first time? Jack said with a troubled face, even if he was a mercenary, he was doing some petty theft at the beginning, and killing people was already what he did after four months as a mercenary. Jack, it's not that I want to force him. Even if the entrustment we have received now is replaced by another mercenary team, it will not be so easy to sneak in. Yi Fei's face was very serious. If we don't force him here, do we have to consider that there is a mercenary in the team who is afraid of killing when we receive such commissions in the future? 
Yi Fei doesn't want to have to cover the whole situation by himself every time. Could it be that he had to work with Jack and the others all the time before he evolved Superman's super hearing to monitor the world? Each member of an excellent mercenary team should be on his own. If not, Yi Fei would not choose to form a team with Jack and Lucy. Just do all the work by yourself, and then spend the money on them. Sooner or later, the job they receive will definitely cause them to split into two groups. Yi Fei's current ability is not yet able to make overall plans for all aspects. It can only be correct to exercise Jack's abilities as much as possible. You're right, I didn't think about it properly Hermano, lo siento brother sorry. After listening to Yi Fei's words, Jack realized that although they had received relatively large commissions this week, every time they dared to do it unscrupulously, it was because Yi Fei was in front of them as a shield. That's why Jack had the illusion that the members of his team were all top-level mercenaries, and the commissions they received were basically harmless. Isn't this top-level mercenary? It's nothing, I just hope that V and Lucy, you two should also realize this. Although I can protect you, I may not be able to protect you by your side anytime and anywhere. Yi Fei doesn't suggest that if he had achieved in such a short period of time the glory and achievements that he hadn't achieved in the past 20 years, he would also be in the sky like Jack. I see, I see, both V and Lucy replied at the same time, to be honest, the two of them have been very well protected by Yi Fei these days, whether V was almost attacked by someone who had fallen to the ground and pretended to be dead in a certain commission, or Lucy because of I didn't pay attention and was almost found to be anti-black. One of these two times, Yi Fei killed the attacker with his super fast speed, and the other time, when the system discovered that there was hacker activity, Yi Fei directly burned the hacker's brain. Otherwise, both of them will be more or less injured to varying degrees. Under such an environment, both V and Lucy became a little slack, there was no way Yi Fei's sense of security was really good. Brother Yi, the download is complete. How should I go now? David's voice reached Yi Fei's ears, and Yi Fei turned on the surveillance system of the Tiger Claw Gang. Bad luck, Jack, V, copy guys, Tiger Claw helped those guys find dead people. After looking at the surveillance camera, Yi Fei cursed, after all, within two minutes of speaking, two members of the Tiger Claw Gang did not follow their patrol rules and went upstairs. Picking up the G58 Classic Smart submachine gun in his hand, Yi Fei got out of the car. It can only be said that the weapons made by Kong Dao are really delicious. The way of automatically tracking the enemy without aiming makes Yi Fei a little can't stop. After hearing Yi Fei's words, Jack and V picked up their weapons and got out of the car. Lucy, you don't need to worry so much now, just burn any member of the Tiger Claw gang you can see. No problem. At Yi Fei's command Lucy starts hooking up to the camera and starts burning any Tiger Claws she can see. Ah, Exxon. For a while, the younger brothers of the Tiger Claw gang in the facility caught fire one by one without warning. Oh Karsang, mother. Kill K, help. I'm on fire. A hacker has hacked into our surveillance system. Hurry up and get rid of it. The leader of the Tiger Claw gang in this stronghold quickly reacted when he saw this situation. This spontaneous combustion for no reason can be said to be a problem with the prosthetic body failure, but if a group of people start to spontaneously combust one by one, there must be a hacker. The younger brother of the Tiger Claw Gang, who was not on fire, heard the elder brother's words and knocked out all the surveillance probes in their facility. Soon, everyone was safe and sound except for those Tiger Claw boys who had been set on fire by Lucy. Yi Fei, all the surveillance cameras in their building have been shut down. I can't continue hacking now. Hearing what Lucy said, Yi Fei nodded and said, it's okay, you wait in the car now, and leave the rest to us. As Yi Fei said that, they killed all the way in. Under the attack of the G58 classic smart submachine gun that Yi Fei bought at a high price, those Tiger Claw gang members who dared to show their heads were beaten to death. All go, Yi Fei, your marksmanship is not bad, did you spend a lot to buy this thing? You must know that although Kong Dao's weapons are easy to use, there is only one disadvantage, that is, they are expensive. And what Yi Fei bought was the enhanced version with better quality and faster fire rate, referred to as military-grade purple. Aiming well by yourself is not as fun as shooting casually without using your brain. When Yi Fei was playing FPS games in his previous life, he was always killed by brother Suozi. 
Now that he is in the world of cyberpunk, he still lets him aim. I haven't cheated in my previous life, but I came here to lock up Shaori in this life. Ahem, what's wrong with exchanging shooting experience with the members of the Tiger Claw Gang? I'm going to make one for fun later on. Jack saw that Yifei could hit those Tiger Claw Gang members who only showed a little bit of their body parts with random shots, which made him hungry. Inside the building, brother, three people came outside, and one of them was holding Kong Dao's smart submachine gun. The brothers outside couldn't stand it anymore. A boy with Shamat's rooster head ran up to the head of the stronghold and said, Hachi, don't we also have the Shingen of a Robin? What are you eating? Hearing what the elder brother said, the younger brother was obviously aggrieved. After all, what they bought was only a few hundred euros of ordinary goods, which were not at the same level as the military-grade G-58 in Yifei's hands. As long as their smart guns are not exposed too much, they can't be locked at all. On the other hand, Yifei's G-58 can be locked by just showing a little part. How the hell do you fight? Boss. The weapon in that guy's hand is obviously a better military version. The brothers opened the scoop on that thing as soon as they showed their heads, and there is no way to fight it. The younger brother said a little aggrieved. Baga, we are the warriors of the Tiger Claw Gang. Just a few fools. Boom, no sooner had the boss finished speaking than Yifei blasted a grenade through their walls. Yifei, those guys outside are taken away by your treasure, can you leave the rest to me? Jack looked at Yifei, who was firing vigorously in front of him, and said a little speechlessly. Did you just say you want to train them? As a result, now that I feel good about myself, I don't want to leave anyone for them, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, then you and V can deal with these guys, I'll go inside and bring that kid David out. Yifei put away the G58 and walked up the stairs. Boy, come out for me, chop suey. I'm going to chop you into eight pieces. The two younger brothers from the Tiger Claw gang outside the office looked very annoyed at David sitting in the office. It's a pity that they don't have access control cards and the guns in their hands can't penetrate the door, so they can only be helpless and furious outside. They didn't know that the brothers outside had all been killed by Yifei, and even their boss probably had to meet their Amaterasu soon. Yifei moved directly behind the two of them, and before they could react, Yifei grabbed each of them with one hand, making their heads come into close contact. Of course, Yifei used a little bit of strength. The heads of the two people split open immediately. Well, split in every sense. Enough, David, how long are you going to stay in there? Yifei was also a little speechless to David who was staying in the office, at least you have Sean Weistein, just open the door and run out. And Yifei's actions scared David who was in the office at once. Although he had just killed a person, David had never seen such a bloody scene. Vomit. All of a sudden, he vomited on the floor of the office. Oh, come down immediately after you vomit. Yi Fei shook his head and glanced at David, the young man was still too young. If David could hear what Yi Fei said, he would definitely want to yell, Brother, if you kill these guys, kill them, you don't need to make them all over the floor, okay? Who can have no reaction? Yi Fei walked downstairs, only the leader of the Tiger Claw Gang stronghold was left on the scene. Yi Fei, you said that these guys are weird enough. They yelled quite loudly when they asked the younger brother to die. When he came to me, he kowtowed to me and begged for mercy. Jack pointed to the trembling leader kneeling on the ground and said with disdain. You must know that many gang leaders in Night City need to show loyalty, but they must have the quality of daring to work hard. The guy in front of him yelled loudly when he asked his younger brother to resist, but when it came to him, he became greedy for life and afraid of death. Even if the little boss who knelt on the ground begged and begged could understand what Jack said, he didn't dare to refute, after all, only he and Yifei were left here. It wouldn't be shameful to beg for mercy with Yifei and the others, anyway those younger brothers died. It didn't take more than five minutes for Jack and V to kill those younger brothers just now, but more than a dozen people were killed by Jack and V as if they were playing a game. It's just a small character. You can kill them directly. These neon people have no backbone. If you have bigger fists than him, he will naturally kneel down to you. Yi Fei is also full of disdain. Although he is not an angry youth, he still can't see these small days. Otherwise, he wouldn't move the axis and directly pick the stronghold of the Tiger Claw Gang. 
No no no, I'm not a small character. My father is Miyagawa Iris. I can give you money. A lot of money. Please let me go. Hearing Yi Fei's words, Miyagawa Hideo's face turned a little pale. His father was a core member of the Miyagawa Iris Tiger Claw Gang, how could he die in such a small place? If his father hadn't said that he would train him to gradually take over the affairs of the Tiger Claw Gang, if he had been sent here two days ago, he wouldn't have given up those luxury cars and villas to stay here with these low-class boys. All go, Miyagawa Iris, that pervert from the Tiger Claw Gang. Jack couldn't help but exclaim when he heard the name. Jack, do you know what this Miyagawa Iris is made of? Yi Fei asked, although he liked to play cyberpunk games in his previous life, he didn't dig into the relationship between the characters in it. Miyagawa Iris should be one of the few people he killed in the Genting building when he was playing games in his previous life. I know, one of the big bosses of the Tiger Claw Gang, his status is about the same as that of a priest in Night City. Yi Fei, maybe we can make a fortune right now. Jack said slyly, that's right, I'm rich. As long as you let me go, I'll give you 100,000. No, 150,000. Hideo Miyagawa immediately responded when he heard that Jack had the idea of asking him to pay for his life. In his opinion, no matter how much money you have, no matter how high your status is, if you die, you are nothing. As long as he is alive, his father's status is much money as you want. Tisk tisk tisk, I didn't expect you to be so rich with such a frustrating look. Well, let me see how much you want to pay for your life. Remember you only have one chance. Yi Fei did not agree to Miyagawa Hideo's request for 150,000 yuan to buy his life, but instead let him choose how much to spend to buy his life. This is a very smart choice, after all, 150,000 is definitely not his limit. Yi Fei wants to see how much money this guy can shell out. Hideo Miyagawa was stunned when he heard Yi Fei's words. He originally thought that he could directly knock out these mercenaries by paying a huge sum of 150,000 yuan, life. You, the life I said is worth a million, do you think I can get it out? Miyagawa Hideo didn't know how many times he greeted Yi Fei and his family. You must know that 150,000 is already half of the cash he owns now. Generally speaking, if he has earned this money, even if he leaves Night City and travels around the world there are plenty of places to go. I'll show you so much if it's okay. Hideo Miyagawa gritted her teeth and transferred 300,000 euros to Yifei, which was already all the money he had here. No matter how much he had, he could only ask for it from Miyagawa Iris, but he wouldn't naively think that Yifei would give him a chance to contact his father. Hey, you have so much eyebrows and big eyes to hide so much, but forget it, for the sake of your generosity, I will spare you. Yi Fei frowned when he saw the 300,000 in the transfer. He didn't expect this guy to be able to carry 300,000 in the bank he carried with him. I'm afraid I didn't even have the money for a taxi. Thank you, thank you. Hearing Yi Fei's words, Miyagawa Hideo finally breathed a sigh of relief and bowed and thanked Yi Fei again and again, as if Yi Fei had done him a great favor. Let's go, this boss spent a lot of money. Yi Fei gave Jack and V a wink and Jack and V also nodded and put away their guns and left. Just in time for David, who had recovered, to come down the stairs, and took him with him along the way. Tisk tisk, we've made a lot of money this time, but Yi Fei, wouldn't you be afraid that he would retaliate against us if you let him go like this? After returning to the car, Jack started the car and asked Yi Fei. I said let him go today, but didn't say let him go tomorrow. Yi Fei frowned slightly, looked at Jack and said, then you are too troublesome, why not kill him here? I downloaded 100 million small viruses in his program. Well, by this time tomorrow, he will be overloaded by his own program and die. Alas, the son of the poor Tiger Claw gang boss is going to die from a small advertisement. Yi Fei's words made Jack and David shudder a little, and at the same time they felt a little sympathetic to this young master. Sensing David and Jack's strange eyes, Yi Fei looked back at them. Why are you two looking at me like that? Nothing. It's okay no problem. Hearing Yi Fei's question, David and Jack said that the big guy couldn't afford to provoke them, and both looked out the window. I said, Yi Fei, I'll let you steal some data, what do you mean by directly porting someone else's stronghold? 
Okada Kazuko looked at Yifei with a flat face in front of him very speechlessly, as if what he just took away was just a scavenger's nest, not a stronghold of the Tiger Claw Gang. He Gezi, I don't want to do that either. The young man in our team who just joined was discovered, otherwise the Tiger Claw Gang's stronghold must be fine. Yi Fei said with a rascal look. Seeing Yi Fei's indifferent look, Okada and Kako were suddenly so angry that his teeth ached. Why did Yi Fei have nothing to do when she was working for other intermediaries, but she made such a big mess when she came here? Forget it, I will pay you your reward now. Thanks, remember to find me next time you have a job, Obasan. Yi Fei walked out after finishing speaking. Only Okada Wakako with black lines all over his face was left in place. Ding, Moses, I'm Okada Wakako, who is it? Okada Wakako connected the phone. Okada, I know it's the mercenaries you're looking for. Tell me who they are. If you dare to mess with our tiger claw, help me make him hungry. On the other end of the phone, a bald man shouted angrily. He had just received a call from his son, saying that their stronghold had been taken over by a few mercenaries and they had blackmailed him 300,000 euros. Hearing these news, Miyagawa Iris was immediately so angry that he was about to suffer from high blood pressure. No mercenary from the Tiger Claw Gang had dared to offend them like this in Night City for many years. Most of the strongholds were destroyed because of the direct battles of the big gangs, but the situation where three or four mercenaries directly took over the situation like today never happened. This is tantamount to telling those outsiders that the Tiger Claw Gang is just a paper tiger, and even mercenaries can take away their strongholds. Suddenly, not only Miyagawa Iris, but another big brother in the gang, Xiaopu Weixin, was also angry endlessly. The two big bosses of the Tiger Claw Gang decided to drive out Yifei and this group of mercenaries, otherwise the face of their Tiger Claw Gang would basically become a pool of mud. After searching around, Miyagawa Iris found out that the initiator of this commission was Okada Wakako, so he called Okada Wakako for an explanation. Look at what you said, I dare not entrust mercenaries to destroy your stronghold, it has nothing to do with me, just hang up like this. Okada and Ukako hung up the phone after finishing speaking. To be honest, although she was also very angry with Yifei and the others for destroying the Tiger Claw Gang's stronghold, these had nothing to do with her, but Miyagawa Iris was able to locate the commission from her. Looks like there's a mouse around me. Okada Wakako looked outside her office, narrowing her eyes slightly. Dot dot dot. Ritz bar. Ah, ah, David stand up and play. Don't sit there like a gourd. Jack stood in the middle of the dance floor and danced with the hot girl next to him and shouted. David, on the other hand, sat in the booth a little cramped, not knowing where the cover was placed for a while. I can only drink beer that I don't like one mouthful at a time. And Yifei has already gone to Judy's studio to record today's Cheomong. Yifei, did you go to the Cheomong game studio yesterday? Judy looked at Yifei who had just finished recording Mewtwo and asked. Yeah, I perfected that Mewtwo game and bought that studio for a little money. Yifei did not deny it, after all, such things must not be hidden. Yifei, you did this a little too fast, didn't you? You just made a complete body of that semi-finished Mewtwo game for them. It's okay, I know a little about programming. Hearing Yi Fei's very pretending words, Judy was also speechless. Could this be something that can be done with just a little bit of programming? Even if the semi-finished Cheomong game is made by her, a talented Cheomong technical expert, it will definitely not work in two or three months. It just takes someone else's help to figure it out. Fortunately, Yi Fei came up with such a thing in a week. That's right, this morning, the Beyond Game Studio, which was renamed by Yi Fei, has already begun to sell the Cheomong game Apex they created to the outside world. As an expert in Cheomong, Judy naturally bought a copy. After playing it, she found that this game was the one that Yi Fei tried a week ago. After making a phone call and confirming with Philip, the chief designer of Beyond Game Studio, Judy knew that Yifei actually produced the complete version of the semi-finished Mewtwo game. You hid it deep enough. Why don't ye dash and come over and show me how to edit this super dream? Seeing Yifei pretend, Judy took out a Cheomong, which was more difficult to edit, and put it on the table and said. Okay, let me take a look, but it may not be as good as your cut. After Yifei finished speaking, she stood beside Judy and started editing the super dream. 
A few minutes later, under Judy's astonished eyes, Yi Fei completed the difficult to edit Cheomong. If you come to cut Mewtwo, you will definitely be hotter than Jimmy Kurosaki. Looking at the perfectly edited Cheomong in front of her, Judy couldn't help sighing. How can there be a person with such outrageous talent? There is nothing wrong with Judy's thinking. After all, although Yi Fei's mercenary career is not yet the top, it must be the most famous mercenary rookie these days. And from the fact that he can perfect a Mewtwo game in a few days, it seems that Yi Fei's talent in making Mewtwo is much stronger than her. It's okay, then I'll come back next time when I have good material. Yi Fei patted Judy on the shoulder and walked out of the studio. Yi Fei realized something was wrong when he reached the door. Just now he patted Judy on the shoulder and Judy didn't point her Liz at his head. Never mind, too lazy to think so much, Yi Fei went to find Jack and V. Hey, brat, where did the Sinvestine on your body come from? I'm asking you something. As soon as Yi Fei walked to their booth, he saw a strong man much bigger than Jack shouting at David. You, which onion are you? It's none of your business where other people's prosthetic bodies come from. Hearing Jack's words, man turned his head and glanced at him, then frowned and recognized Jack. Jack Wells, this matter should have nothing to do with you, are you sure you want to meddle in your own business? Man didn't know that David joined Yi Fei's team. After all, David just joined today, so it's normal that the news didn't spread. So in his opinion, Jack's current behavior is completely looking for trouble. I recognize you, man, right? You can be regarded as a relatively powerful figure among our mercenaries. It's a pity, bullying a kid who has just started, and now it seems that you are like this. Jack has been a mercenary for several months, so he naturally recognizes man. In short, this matter is between me and this kid. Although you have become famous recently, I don't recommend fighting with you. Man looked at the pointing crowd around him, and didn't want to compromise easily. He looked for Gloria for a day, but the other party didn't answer her calls, so he brought his own people to the Ritz bar for fun. In the end, he saw a young boy showing his prosthetic body to the girls in the bar. Man recognized at a glance that it was Sean Weistein, whom he had been thinking about day and night for the past two days. This thing is not a big commodity, usually only one or two come out a year. I just paid for one the day before yesterday, and I saw it here today. It is obvious that this should be the Sean Weistein in Gloria's hand. But man couldn't figure out why this thing was on a kid. This led to the present scene. Don't be so angry, can you sit down and talk slowly? Yi Fei walked over to Jack with a calm expression, and said casually. You really think I dare not touch you? Seeing Yi Fei's extremely plain look, Man immediately became angry, and he could be considered a top notch in the mercenary circle. Although Yi Fei and the others are very famous now, but they are trying to embarrass themselves like this. Immediately, he took out his weapon, and Dorio and Rebecca, who were standing beside Man, also pointed their guns at Yi Fei. What are you doing? What are you doing? You guys have to fight out. Although the security guard at the bar didn't want to take care of this matter, but if he thought about it, if he didn't do it, the boss might want to pick his skin off. Whatever you fight, sit down and have a good talk, Brian, I can take care of things here and you go. When Yi Fei finished speaking, Man and the others realized that Yi Fei had taken away all the guns in their hands, and Yi Fei put those guns on the bartender's side after speaking and the security guard hurriedly left when he heard Yi Fei's words. Now, after all, Yi Fei is an old regular at the Ritz bar, and he is also very close to Judy. Hey, give me back my gun, you. Seeing her precious gun being taken away by Yi Fei, Rebecca shouted in dissatisfaction. Man, why don't we sit down and talk to them slowly? Dorio said with an ugly face beside Man at this time. If Yi Fei had the ability to grab their guns directly, he also had the ability to kill them all in an instant. But now that Yi Fei has said that he wants to sit down and talk slowly, there may be some misunderstanding in the middle. Man's face changed again and again, and finally decided to reason with Yi Fei under the pressure of Yi Fei's absolute strength. I just wanted to ask that kid, where did the Cienvestine on your body come from? Man looked eagerly at Sean Weistein on David's back and said, David got a little hairy from man's look, and immediately put on his clothes. I found this prosthetic body from my mother's clothes, so it should have nothing to do with you. 
David explained. Wait, mom, is your mom's name Gloria Martinez? You know my mother. Of course, she and I still have a cooperative relationship. The day before yesterday, she contacted me and said that there was a Sean Weistein to sell to me. I paid 20,000 euros, but he hasn't answered my call since contacting yesterday. Man frowned and said, he originally thought that Gloria was simply tricking him, but he didn't expect that this prosthetic body was installed on her son. I don't know about that. David was telling the truth, because Yi Fei saved David and Gloria and paid for the medical expenses in advance, so David never checked Gloria's account at all, so he didn't find out that his mother's account was too much 20,000 euros. Even if that's the case, how could you, a brat, put such a dangerous thing on your body? Your little body will go crazy after using it once or twice, right? Pilar, who was sitting on the side, pointed to David and said. I've used it four or five times today. After finishing speaking, David rushed out and snatched the cigarette from Pilar's hand and sat back. Now it's the sixth time. Oh, man is really crazy. Pila was not only frightened every time, but also looked at man and laughed. Man ignored Pila's words, but looked at David and said, I don't care what happened to Gloria, anyway, I already paid for that prosthetic body, or I'll pay you to dismantle it, or I'll kill you and take it down. How about I go to the street and kill a violent terrorist mobile team and dismantle a Sean Weistein for you? Yi Fei said at this time. Just kidding, Sean Weistein is not an ordinary prosthetic body. This thing is directly connected to the human nerves. If you can't get a prosthetic body of the same level or better, it will cause some permanent damage to that person if you remove it. Aren't you joking? Do you want to have a good talk after all? Man has nothing to do at this time. The pursuit of power is his belief. Even in the anime where he already felt that he was going to suffer from cyber psychosis, man was still unwilling to reduce the number of prosthetic bodies and even wanted to install more powerful ones prosthetic body. It's very simple. David will return the money to you. That's it. If you don't want to, I have no other plan. David is now his subordinate, and he will not release the meat he eats. Well, I don't want more from you, just forget about 20,000 euros. Seeing Yi Fei's attitude, Man knew that he would definitely not be able to get the prosthetic body, but there was no way he could not be as strong as Yi Fei. To put it bluntly, it's not bad for Yi Fei to ask David to pay him back the money, otherwise he doesn't need to care so much at all. Turn on, David, didn't you just give you 30,000 euros just now? Yi Fei patted the reluctant David next to him and said. I just blackmailed from Hideo Miyagawa. Ahem, the 300,000 to come Yi Fei also gave David 30,000 euros, and he, Lucy, V, and Jack shared the rest of the money equally. After receiving the 20,000 euros transferred back from David, Man's complexion improved a bit. Although he didn't get Sean Weistein, he didn't lose money anyway. Come on, shall we have a drink? Yi Fei raised a bottle of beer on the table at this time and said, his face was no longer cold but gentle. Man, we usually work in Santo Domingo. Man reintroduced himself. I heard, my name is Yi Fei, I just came to Night City not long ago. After Yi Fei finished speaking, he drank the wine in his hand in one gulp. Although his tone of voice was a bit rushed just now, he still admired man in his heart. The performance in the anime is also very reliable, and he will consciously protect his teammates. If he didn't end up with cyber psychosis, he might become one of the legends of Night City. Hello, handsome guy, is your name Yi Fei? My name is Rebecca. Yi Fei had just finished drinking a bottle of beer when a little girl sat beside him and poked Yi Fei's ribs with her elbow. Nice to meet you, Rebecca. Your gun is with the bartender. He'll give it to you when you leave. Yi Fei thought that Rebecca wanted to get his gun back, but he still underestimated the girl in Night City. Who said it was a gun, how about it? Shall we go out and have fun? Puff, Yi Fei was dumbfounded when he heard this, and immediately spit out the wine from his mouth. Ahahaha, Rebecca, you are not like this usually. Seeing that Yi Fei was so frightened that he spit out the wine, Pila laughed, and then looked at Lucy who had been looking at Yi Fei. Pila had noticed this beauty when she came here just now, she was much prettier than all the women he had ever seen, and immediately wanted to strike up a conversation. Shut up and take you. Rebecca blushed and scolded Pila. When she saw Yi Fei just now, she was a little surprised. After all, 
she wanted to find a handsome prosthetic in Night City men are no different from finding a needle in a haystack. It's just that Man and Yifei still have conflicts, so they can only regard Yifei as an enemy first. Now that the problem is solved, it must be a conversation if you want to strike up a conversation. Ahem, next time, I'm a little tired from work today. Yi Fei said, Okay, then this is my contact information, remember to contact me when you are free. When Rebecca heard Yi Fei's refusal and did not suggest, she directly sent her phone number to Yi Fei. Yi Fei, you are really popular with women. Jack sat on the side and said sourly. First, both V and Lucy are interested in Yi Fei. Although they didn't say it, it is still obvious. There is also Judy who has never given a man's contact information, and now the little girl. Rebecca has a very good attitude towards Yi Fei. Although all he likes are women with good figures, it is quite enviable for a petite and cute girl like Rebecca to take the initiative to strike up a conversation. Beauty, what's your name? My name is Pila, and I'm from Man's Team. Would you like to have a drink? Pilar said to Lucy across the table at this time. Hearing Pilar's words, Lucy glanced at him and then a blue light appeared in his eyes. Bark. Wow. Pila was shocked by the electric current all of a sudden. Lucy was a little upset when she saw Rebecca strike up a conversation with Yifei, but now this perverted guy came to strike up a conversation with Lucy. Lucy directly took the other party as a punching bag, hacked into his system and released a little electricity. Ha ha ha. Pila. You guys, you dare to strike up a conversation with anyone, so you are deflated now. Dorio laughed out loud when she saw Pila like this. Didn't you see that Lucy's eyes never left Yifei? This is obviously either Yifei's girlfriend or likes Yifei. And a little bit of comparison, Pila and Yifei would choose Yifei for anyone. The same is true for V next to Lucy. Although he seems to be drinking, his eyes are actually staring at Yifei and never leave. Dorio, what are you gloating about? Pila directly gave Dorio a middle finger. He didn't expect that this cold and cold beauty would have such a temper. Would you like a drink for the beauty? Seeing that he failed to strike up a conversation with Lucy, Pila set his sights on V. It can't be that everyone in Yifei's team has such a bad temper, right? Roll. V's tone was very flat but unquestionable, and of course her eyes never set on Pila's body. No, beauty, we just want to have a drink with you so as not to. Before Pila finished speaking, V directly took out the M760 Omaha that Yifei bought for her. Although this gun is not the epic pistol made in the game, it is also a pistol that Yifei paid a high price for. Bought from a member of the 6th Street Gang. If you don't want your head to explode, I suggest you go drink with those dancing girls. Although V was smiling when he said this, his eyes were extremely cold. Pila didn't dare to bet on whether V would dare to blow his head off, and immediately nodded in agreement. Ha ha ha, Pila, your habit of casually flirting with beautiful women is still the same, you. Man, who was drinking next to him, also laughed out loud when he saw this scene. Pila, an old pervert, likes to strike up a conversation with a prettier girl. He always said some very cold dirty jokes, and now seeing him deflated can make man fly with joy. TCH, it's because those beauties didn't notice my bright spot. Pilar still put his middle finger in front of man, and said with a bit of a dead mouth. Two hours later, okay, that's all for today, it's time to go home and sleep. Yi Fei stretched and said, oh, why, let's go have another drink. Rebecca, who was having a good time chatting with Yi Fei, became unhappy when she heard Yi Fei say that she was going home. When she was chatting with Yi Fei, Yi Fei could pick up the words no matter what she said. This greatly increased Rebecca's affection for Yi Fei, and she almost went home with Yi Fei tonight. Next time, I'm a little sleepy after getting two commissions in a row today. Yi Fei patted Rebecca's shoulder and said gently, Okay, then you have to remember to call me. Make sure to call me. Seeing that Yi Fei still had to go home, Rebecca said with some reluctance, Ah, Pilar, let's go to the next place for a refill together. Jack got along with Pila for some reason, and at this moment, he was hooking shoulders with him like two old friends who hadn't seen each other for many years. Okay, Jack, hey, Rebecca, you go back by yourself first, Jack and I are going to drink at the next point. After Pila finished speaking, he walked out of the Ritz bar with Jack shoulder to shoulder. David, 
I'll go see Gloria tomorrow too. I haven't seen her for a while, but you're lucky enough to meet Yi Fei. Man said, smoking a cigarette. Ahem, yes, meeting brother Yi is indeed the luckiest thing for me. David also explained to Man in the past two hours why Gloria didn't contact Man and how she got on Yi Fei's lap. Okay, see you tomorrow, just send me the address when the time comes. Man waved his hand and took Dorio out of the bar. Dot dot dot. On the way home, Yi Fei was sitting in the back row, looking at V and Lucy in front, he felt something was wrong from the moment he got in the car. Originally, Yi Fei was going to sit in the co-pilot habitually, but as soon as he opened the door, Lucy said a faint thank you and got in the car. And V was even more extreme. After getting in the car, he started the car without waiting for Yi Fei. If Yi Fei didn't run so fast and opened the car door and got in, maybe he would have to walk home now. After getting in the car, Yi Fei wanted to say something to ease the atmosphere, but Lucy and V chatted happily in front of them. It's as if Yi Fei is a transparent person. Yi Fei, that. V, Yi Fei, the two of us are chatting, please don't disturb us. Lucy, you shouldn't be interested in topics between girls, are you? Yi Fei, this weird atmosphere was maintained all the way home, still V went to take a shower first, leaving Lucy and Yi Fei in the living room. Good evening, residents of Night City, today's dead man's lottery. Although the host on TV was talking passionately, Yi Fei had no interest in watching TV at all. Lucy was sitting at the other end of the sofa with her computer in her arms, typing codes silently. Lucy, Yi Fei called out tentatively. Lucy ignored it and continued typing codes on the computer keyboard. Yi Fei sat beside Lucy and held Lucy's hand. What's the matter with you and V? I feel that something is wrong after you came out of the bar. Yi Fei has actually guessed why Lucy and V are angry now, but he still has to ask knowingly. Nonsense, at this time, if you say that you understand it well, wouldn't it be worse to die? After Lucy's hand was held by Yi Fei, her whole body trembled, followed by silence. In fact, she didn't understand why, but she saw that Rebecca basically spent two hours chatting with Yi Fei in the bar, and then drinking. Seeing Yi Fei and Rebecca talking and laughing happily, Lucy felt a little uncomfortable. But I can't tell what kind of strange feeling it is. Lucy has never had this strange feeling since she was born. I felt a little itchy in my heart, but I didn't know what to say, and my mind was in a mess. I, I don't know either. Yi Fei's gentle face and extremely gentle tone immediately made Lucy a little confused. Silence for a while. Lucy looked at Yi Fei again and said softly, Yi Fei, do you want to go for a night run? Of course can. Yi Fei smiled heartily. Clatter. In the bathroom, V is still taking a shower. Ha, huh, why is the shampoo delivered by the robot in green packaging today? Forget it, it can be used. V glanced at the shampoo in the green package in the bathroom and was a little curious, but he continued to take a shower without saying anything. She wants to teach Yi Fei a lesson tonight in a square park not far from Yi Fei's home. Lucy said she wanted to run at night, but she actually took Yi Fei for a walk. Obviously, I had the experience of running and exercising at night with Yi Fei a few days ago, but today I have no intention of running at night at all. Just walking aimlessly in the park with Yi Fei. Lucy, you've been looking sullen from the very beginning, is it something I did wrong? Yi Fei still said very considerately, of course he has now naturally held Lucy's little hand. I'm not unhappy, I just feel that something is wrong with me. Something's wrong, can you tell me? Seeing Lucy's bewildered face, Yi Fei couldn't bear it, but finally held back. After all, if this kind of problem can't be solved now, wouldn't he want to give up his important people? This is something he can't bear, his wish is to give these girls a home. At this time, Yi Fei suddenly sensed that there was danger in the rear. At an extremely fast speed, Yi Fei turned his head and saw several men in black suits appearing behind him with guns. A Robin Ninja, Yi Fei raised his brows, he hasn't gone to the Wangban to steal the chip yet, why is the Wangban getting into his trouble now? And Lucy next to Yi Fei's face lost all color in an instant. She ran out of a deserted hacker base. Didn't these people come to arrest her? Two, there are important people in our company who want to meet with you, can you come with us? An Arata ninja with obvious signs of transformation all over his body walked up to Yi Fei and said. 
The two modified eyes were filled with red light, and they looked Yi Fei up and down. It was obvious that he was scanning Yi Fei. Ms. Abernathy, we have scanned the target's body and confirmed that there are no traces of prosthetic body transformation. Aragata Ninja just stood in front of Yi Fei and reported the situation to Abernathy, who was talking to him. Very good. Bring him back. It's best not to hurt him. If it doesn't work, use coercive means. Abernathy on the other end of the phone ordered. In order to mobilize this team of barbarian ninjas, she has used the highest authority as the leader of the intelligence department. If she can't bring back Yi Fei, she may be severely hit by her competitors. You ugly change to this B and still want to arrest people. Yi Fei has now hacked into the system of the Aragaban ninja in front of him and burned his brain without talking too much nonsense with him. Ah, the Arata ninja in front of him could only let out a scream, and then his head burst into sparks and fell to the ground. Seeing this scene, the remaining Araban ninjas hiding in the dark took out their prosthetic mantis knives and rushed towards Yi Fei. Lucy, you hide by the side first, I will take a walk with you later. After Yi Fei finished speaking, he ran to the two Arban ninjas who appeared. He wanted to see if the Arban ninjas in this world were as brave as in the game and they dared to interrupt her date with Lucy, which annoyed Yi Fei very much. You, you dare to disturb Lao Tzu's good business. Wait until you see hell. When Lucy left, Yi Fei gave these wild ninjas a dangerous look. The ghost knows how good the atmosphere was just now, it was all disturbed by these guys. Swish, Yi Fei's figure disappeared directly in place. Arata Ninja quickly activated his prosthetic eyes to try to find Yi Fei's location and the current Yifei has been baptized by the sun for a week, and it is already stronger than the Yifei a week ago. Now if Yifei wants to be photographed by any surveillance system in the world, even if it is a military-grade surveillance system. While the two Arabord ninjas were still searching for Yifei, Yifei had quietly appeared behind one of the Arabord ninjas. Crack, Yifei also grabbed the guy's two arms without hesitation, Yifei didn't care about the mantis knife in the arm of this Aragaban ninja at all, since it couldn't cut his skin at all anyway. Then he put a foot on the back of the Arabord ninja, and with a sudden force, the Arabord ninja was separated from his arm. After rubbing on the ground for two meters, the face of the Aragaban ninja showed a hideous mechanical face, and the brain under the mechanical shell could be vaguely seen, and the place where his two arms were broken didn't even flow out of blood, just there was some black oil flowing. Hey! Good guys, don't you even know how to bleed? Yi Fei exclaimed immediately when he saw this scene. Although he had known for a long time that these barbarian ninjas had been transformed to a high degree, he did not expect them to be transformed into this. Another Arama ninja saw this scene and didn't hesitate at all. The group of ninjas said they were ninjas, but in fact they were dead servants trained by Saburo Arata. Cut to Yi Fei. Ding. The imagined image of the sharp blade piercing the flesh did not appear, and Yi Fei took the full blow of the Arata ninja without evading it. At this time, such a barren ninja started to swing the mantis knife crazily at Yi Fei. But Yi Fei just stood still and let him chop at will. Ah, have you done it well? This level is not even considered tickling. Yi Fei yawned and looked at the barbarian ninja playfully. To be honest, he couldn't even feel the attack of these guys. Ah. Seemingly sensing the contempt in Yi Fei's words, the barbarian ninja couldn't help roaring angrily. Boom! A sniper shot sounded 300 meters away. Yi Fei turned his head and took the powerful kinetic energy bullet that had been charged for five seconds with one hand. Nani! Impossible! The Aragata ninja, who has always been inhumane, couldn't help being surprised. The tsunami cat in his hand is an advanced military style sniper rifle. He wouldn't be surprised if Yi Fei dodged the bullet, but would continue to shoot Yi Fei. But now Yi Fei directly took the sniper bullet that he had stored energy for five seconds. To put it an exaggeration, even if the heavy hammer took the bullet head on, it would not feel good. And Yi Fei not only caught it, but also caught it with one hand, just like catching a sandbag thrown by a child. Boom! There was a loud noise in the office of the head of Arabanta's intelligence department. This is impossible. Abernathy was shocked when he saw the video sent back from the Arata Ninja prosthetic eye. It would be fine if Yi Fei's speed and strength far surpassed the prosthetic body. The cat and the bullet charged by the sniper rifle are not a concept at all. 
They have calculated with internal data that this kind of military-grade Mauyu sniper rifle can penetrate the best 5cm alloy steel plate that they made themselves. Yi Fei caught the bullet like this, not just a simple matter of strength, but his physical strength has also reached a terrifying level. To put it bluntly, if Yi Fei wants to break into the Arbon Tower now, they must have Arbon's latest military-grade machine guns in their hands. Let's not talk about whether they can get so many weapons of that level from Wangban's huge order, even if they get it, they may not necessarily pose a threat to Yi Fei. Hurry up and retreat. The target has completely exceeded expectations and needs to be reported to Saburo Arama. Abernathy now realizes what a terrible guy she has offended. Her usual thought is to look down on mercenaries, but now she can't guarantee that if Yi Fei knows that it is the wild ninja she ordered. Maybe I will be hung at the door of the Baron Tower the next day. The Baron Ninja who was more than 300 meters away from Yi Fei heard Abernathy's order, and hurriedly put away his sniper rifle and prepared to run away. Where are you going? When Yi Fei's voice came, the Aragaban Ninja was taken aback for a moment, then directly stretched out his prosthetic hand cannon with his backhand, wanting to shoot Yi Fei. Then Yi Fei chopped off his arm with a knife. I don't care who you are, if you dare to provoke me, you will die. After Yi Fei finished speaking, he directly punched the head of the Arabin ninja. Then Yi Fei fell into thinking. Who sent Arata ninja? Abandoned Lai Zan, or Arata Hanako, or Machiko Arata, whom I have never seen before. He obviously hadn't shown his face to Arbin, why did the other party stare at him? Forget it, since Huang Ban dares to attack first and turn around, I must let them know what it means to turn the world upside down. Yi Fei didn't bother to think too much about it, but what was certain was that Saburo Areta, the core figures of Areta, probably didn't know his existence. Otherwise, today should not be as simple as these three barbarian ninjas, it may have to be Adam Heavy Hammer himself. It's just that he is not afraid of Adam's hammer at all now. Yi Fei, when Yi Fei appeared in front of Lucy, Lucy hugged Yi Fei when she saw that Yi Fei was safe and sound. Then he began to check whether there was any wound on Yi Fei's body. What are you doing, Lucy? Those Arabin ninjas are no match for me. Yi Fei looked at the nervous Lucy with some dumbfounding and said, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have kept it from you, I'm sorry. Lucy held Yi Fei with tears in her eyes and kept saying sorry. She thought it was because of herself that Arabin sent the appalling dead warriors, Arata ninjas, to capture Yi Fei and her. What are you sorry for? because of those Arata ninjas. Yi Fei also couldn't figure it out for a while, after all, the target of those barbarian ninjas was himself, so maybe Yi Fei might have caused Lucy to be discovered. Lucy pursed her lips, and then pulled Yi Fei to a corner of the park. Turning his back to Yi Fei, he raised his hair, revealing the deep network interface on the back of his head. I used to be an orphan brought out by Arata from the orphanage. Sitting on a bench in the park, Lucy leaned on Yi Fei's shoulder and put his arm around him, telling stories about her past. After a few minutes, Lucy finished talking about her past, leaning on Yi Fei's shoulder without saying a word. If it were Lucy a week ago, she would have left Yi Fei now. After all, she knew that no one was willing to fight against a Raba group. This is equivalent to giving yourself a death notice, after all, in this world where companies are bigger than countries. The Araba group is one of the largest companies in the world, and it is even more irrational than fighting against their country. But now Lucy has some small expectations in her heart, hoping that there will be someone who can fight against Areta for her. The sense of security and reliability that Yi Fei gave her made her want to become greedy and yearn for the days around Yi Fei. So, so what? Yi Fei's hand gently stroked Lucy's face and said, Even if it's Wangban Company, I can't compare with you in my heart. You are the woman I like. Yi Fei's words were like a bomb exploded in Lucy's heart. Tears could not stop flowing from Lucy's eyes again. To be honest, Lucy was as erratic as a duckweed during the years of wandering outside. Even if she had the wish to go to the moon, it was just a wish. Now that she heard Yi Fei's words, Lucy couldn't help it. Do you have something to rely on yourself? Yi Fei. Then Lucy held Yi Fei's face in both hands, looked at Yi Fei with blurred eyes, and then gave him her fiery kiss. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.